If you were to ask someone just off the street what Christmas was all about, you'd probably get a reply that included something about presents. You know, giving and receiving gifts is a huge part of many holiday traditions. And even in the Christian tradition, we celebrate Christmas as the greatest gift of all, Jesus' birth, God coming in the flesh to make a way for humanity to be saved. So how do you deal with giving and receiving? As we come to the end of the letter to the Philippians, we start to see a real personal connection between the Apostle Paul and this church. We've seen how Paul knows the people there. He knows Yodia and Syntyche and wants them to get along. And Philippians 4, 14 to 19 describes for us how the church in Philippi was truly part of Paul's mission. Go ahead and pause the video and read these verses. You'll find a link to it in the video description below, so go ahead and pause and read Philippians 4, 14 to 19. It's so easy to think of our Christian lives as just something we do on our own. You know, just yesterday we were talking about how easy it is to think of our religious life as something we do by ourselves, our private time with God. But these verses again show how wrong that view is. That's not what it means to believe in Jesus. I think changing this view and following Paul's example of a whole life ministry takes not only a shift in my own thinking, but a change in the attitude of the church. As a community of believers, we need to be supporting one another to live out our beliefs. But what does that look like, and how do we get that from this text? Well, I think we see it in verse 15. You yourselves also know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel, after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, but you alone. The church in Philippi saw the importance and the power of the gospel to change lives. Remember the slave girl and the prison guard from Acts 16? The church had been founded by people who had had a radical shift in the way that they lived their lives based on the preaching of the gospel. They saw the importance of it for their own city and for the world. And so they supported Paul as he left Macedonia, giving sacrificially so that he could preach and teach. Paul's just finished talking about how he's learned to trust God. And part of that lesson was seeing how God worked through other believers to encourage and support him. Now, what did this support look like? It was a sacrificial sharing in both the physical and spiritual work. Part of their gift was monetary. From the language of the text and from what we know about the church in Philippi, we can safely say that a lot of their support would have been financial. Again, think of the people in the church. You know, we read about Lydia who was in the church and she was an entrepreneur, someone who sold purple cloth. The church had financial resources and they were able to send them to Paul. But they also shared in the relational side of the work. Remember Epaphroditus? He was mentioned back in chapter 3 and then again here in verse 18. The church in Philippi sent one of their own members, both to bring the gift, but also to be part of the gospel ministry outside of the city. We see Paul and the church involved in sharing the gospel, trusting in God. And Paul describes what both these gifts are ultimately about in verses 17 and 19. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. And verse 19, And my God will supply all your needs, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So as we think about this text, and especially with Christmas giving and receiving just around the corner, let's be asking, how am I helping others to live for Christ? What are the motivations behind giving and receiving? How is God calling me to trust Him in supplying for needs? <laughs>